All right, this is one new feature that kind of blew my mind. I wasn't exactly sure how this was working, but really neat. Uh, again, just so you can follow along, I'm gonna start simple. So cube 3D, drag it under canvas, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D, just hit subdivide a couple times so you can get a decent amount of points in here. And then we're gonna talk about stroke interpolation. So uh, simply put, if I have a standard brush here and I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna make a, a little line over here and I'm gonna make a bigger line over here, you now have underneath your stroke menu, a uh, interpolate stroke. And right next to it is a strokes count. So you're gonna see it set to 10. I'm gonna hit interpolate. It's gonna look at this stroke and the second stroke and it's gonna put you guessed it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So not including the strokes that you made, it's gonna put 10 in between them and it's gonna interpolate the size difference. And not just the size difference, if I undo that, I say I do a straight line and then I do a squiggly line and then I say interpolate, it's going to interpolate from a straight line to a squiggly line or vice versa. You can go in here and make a squiggly line and then make a straight line, different sizes, interpolate that stroke and there you have it. And again, just like we were doing uh, in the previous videos, if you go back in your history and you want to adjust all of those, go back to this point in history where nothing has changed, control tap it, go all the way forward again, and then you can just adjust last on all of those. Or go down here to masking, mask change points, or go down here, and or go down here to polygroups, group change points, all of those things still available to you. But we're talking about interpolation now. So again, let's change our standard brush here to the uh, drag rec stroke. We'll grab an alpha 06, focal shift down to negative 100. Uh, we'll crank that Z intensity up just a little bit here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna you know, put in a, a change like this. Let's go ahead and actually control tap this point in history. So we're back to where we started here. So we're gonna make a change here and then we're gonna make a smaller one here. So we've we're gonna interpolate between these two. And if I go through here and interpolate them again with 10, you're gonna see when I'm going from bigger to smaller, these ones look like they're more spaced apart and then these ones look like they're kind of packed together. Uh, if I want to you know, smooth the transition out or make the spaces between the larger and the smaller ones the same, there's an option for that. And you guessed it, it's this open and closed circle. So if I undo these and we say, okay, let's do an open circle here. And I'm also gonna change my strokes count. 10 was a little bit too much for the sizes I was using. So we'll go down here and we'll say eight. So I'm gonna say, we're gonna do a small stroke and then we're gonna interpolate that to a bigger stroke here. We're gonna interpolate with an open circle this time. And now instead of them being all packed together uh, on, the, on the bigger ones, it's going to space them evenly so that they kind of uh, space themselves out based on size rather than some absolute value. So again, if we change this, we'll go, Close circle, and here's the thing too, you know, if we change this from drag rec to drag dot, this is gonna make my strokes the exact same size, or it's actually gonna be based on my brush size here. So I can drag out one that's one size, drag out another one that's the exact same size, and now when I interpolate with closed circle, they're gonna be evenly spaced, or if I go in here and interpolate with an open circle, again, um, let's undo this. Same size, same size, open circle, evenly spaced because they're both the same size. So really that open circle is gonna come into play uh, when you have differently sized items. Now I don't have to undo every single time like I've been doing. You can actually go in here and let's uh, switch this back to drag rack. So again, open circle, we're gonna do a small change here and a larger change here. Uh, strokes count of eight, interpolate. If we don't like eight, we can go in here and we can say, you know, change this to five and then just interpolate those last. If you wanna change it to closed circle with a stroke count of six, you can make all these changes, then just hit interpolate again. It'll keep in mind the last two strokes that you've done. So you don't need to you know, keep recreating your first and your last stroke. Just undo the in-betweens, go in here, make the changes that you want. We can change this again, four, open circle, interpolate again, and it's gonna keep in mind your last two strokes. So it'll interpolate accordingly. Now this also works, uh, if you probably have guessed, uh, with IMM brushes as well. So we're gonna scroll all the way back in history to where we just had our regular old cube here. Let's go in here to geometry, delete lower so we don't have any subdivision history. I'm gonna go in here to BI brush insert. We'll just grab industrial parts here. We'll grab a flathead screw. And if and here's one more thing, just to keep reiterating some changes that have been made. If I hit W on my keyboard and then right and left on my uh, keyboard, I can actually cycle through these as opposed to going up here and touching them so I can swap these out on the fly. Uh, but a flat head is totally fine. I'm going to hit Q on my keyboard. And then if I go through here and drag on another one, different size, say interpolate, it's going to interpolate uh, between these two. Well, let's go ahead and I was, I was making some changes here. So one, two, interpolate, open circle. Again, because it's open circle, 
it's going to look at the relative size of these meshes and say, you know what, these smaller ones, they'll be spaced closer together. These larger ones, they'll be spaced a little further apart. The strokes kind of set to four, one, two, three, four in between them, and we're good to go. If I want to change those settings, I can set this to closed circle, strokes count of four again, and now you're going to see these larger ones get packed a little closer together because it's like an absolute value between the midpoint of every single one of these. Now you may be thinking, okay, this works great on a flat surface, and we just picked a cube because they're easy to use. Uh, if we want to, we'll go into the comic key, go in the project, we'll just load up that demo anime head. So we got a nice round surface on here, and we have X symmetry turned on. So if I want to make a screw here and a screw here, no problem. Again, screw, screw, two different sizes. Let's make these a little bit smaller. They're not, they don't need to be huge. Uh, and then again, I just want to interpolate between them. It's going to follow that surface normal. And again, we did close circle that time. So let's go ahead and space these relative. So large to small. In fact, let's crank these uh, stroke counts up here. Let's say eight. And then we're going to open circle. And then again, it's going to follow along and then space them out according to uh, size. And even better, uh, you, it'll also do, uh, you know, if we go in here to snake hook, BSH to grab our snake hook brush. And in fact, let's turn on Sculptors Pro as well. So if you know anything about snake hook brush, you can go through here and you can kind of, uh, it'll keep interpolating your geometry with, you know, snake hook's going to pull away from the object and Sculptors Pro is going to continue to interpolate the geometry as you pull it out. So if we mix all of that functionality with interpolation, so I'm going to go ahead and, you know, pull out a, a change here and then we'll pull out a change here and I can interpolate between these two strokes. Again, we'll go a closed circle eight count. It'll go ahead and interpolate between uh, those two strokes there. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and it's going from smaller to longer and thinner, and it's interpolating between them with a stroke. So again, so many different crazy uses you can use uh, for these two things to get some really, really cool effects. Oh, and one more thing I should mention. So we do have, let's go ahead and turn our Sculptors Pro off here. And uh, we got our standard brush. We're gonna do a drag rec stroke here. You're gonna see there's a replay last and that's set to the hotkey is one. So adjust last replay last and replay last relative has been pulled out of the stroke menu here and been put in your regular menu. So if I replay last, that's gonna look at my last stroke and just replay that stroke over and over again. So if you don't wanna adjust last, you literally just wanna replay the last values. That's one way to do it. Uh, replay last relative is interesting. Uh, and if I hover over this one, you're gonna see that the hotkey for that is shift one. So Replay last is going to replay the stroke over where you just put it. Replay last relative, again, shift one. I can do shift one on my keyboard. And then wherever I have my mouse is going to replay that last stroke on the mesh. Now, if I hover over interpolate, you're going to see that's the hockey for that is control shift one. So we got one shift one and control shift one. So pretty easy to remember. So if I want to go replay last, I can do that. Uh, shift one for replay last relative where my brush stroke is. And then again, if I want to, you know, interpolate, that's just control shift one. And that'll go ahead and then use the uh, interpolate stroke. And I'm going to give you one more example. And I can't wait to see, you know, other brush settings and stuff. Uh, once you all have access to this, what you'll be able to do with these. But um, here's another one. So I'm going to use my move brush. And if I want to go, you know, and interpolate from this stroke over here to this stroke over here, and then control shift one, um, you can see there's kind of ridges in there. Well, the stroke's kind of set to 10 by default. So if we over crank this and then we let's undo back. So we got our strokes count set to 20 this time. So again, if I want to interpolate from this point to this point, kind of like pull out a panel and then do control shift one, uh, we can get a little bit of an e more even stroke here. You know, and there may be instances where that's not going to work so well. You have to go through here and maybe smooth it out. Uh, but this could be another way you can use the interpolate stroke to go through here and like, you know, pull out a panel adjustment from big to small and interpolate between them um, and then get the shape that you're looking for.